Have you ever pondered upon the profound impact of your intentions? It's not something we often stop to consider, yet our intentions have a tremendous power that can shape our reality and experiences. Imagine setting out on a journey with no particular destination in mind. You might stumble upon some spectacular sights, but there's a high chance you'll end up lost. Now, imagine starting the same journey, but this time with a clear intention, a destination. Your path becomes more focused, your steps more purposeful. You know where you're headed and you're more likely to get there. This is the power of intention. The concept of intention is not a new one. Since ancient times, it has been a cornerstone of various world religions, each offering a unique perspective. It's fascinating to see how this seemingly simple concept is interpreted and applied across different cultures and belief systems. In Buddhism, for instance, intention is viewed as a driving force behind actions, a key element of the Noble Eightfold Path. In Hinduism, it's considered the essence of karma, the law of cause and effect. Confucianism sees intention as a moral compass, guiding individuals toward righteousness. Judaism places a significant emphasis on intention in performing mitzvahs or good deeds. Meanwhile, in Islam, intention holds a central place, reflected in the saying, actions are but by intention. But why are we exploring this? Because understanding the power of intention can help us navigate life more effectively. It can guide our actions, influence our decisions, and even shape our destiny. It's like a secret tool we all possess, but not all of us are aware of how to use. So, whether you're about to start a new project or simply looking to bring about a positive change in your life, setting clear intentions can be the first step towards achieving your goals. Now, brace yourself as we embark on this enlightening journey, exploring the concept of intention from various religious perspectives. Buddhism teaches that intention is a powerful force that can shape our destiny. This ancient philosophy places great emphasis on the role of intention in our lives, seeing it as the driving force behind our actions and ultimately the architect of our fate. The concept of intention in Buddhism is intricately linked to the law of karma. This universal principle states that Every action, whether physical, verbal, or mental, generates a force that can influence our future. Here, it's crucial to understand that it's not merely the action itself that matters, but the intention that drives it. For instance, if a person gives a gift with a genuine desire to bring joy, the act is imbued with good karma. Conversely, if the same act is performed with a selfish motive, it breeds negative karma. Thus, it's our intentions that dictate the quality of our karma. Buddha, the enlightened one, recognized the powerful role of intention in shaping our destiny. He included right intention as one of the critical elements in the Eightfold Path, a guide to ethical and mindful living. Right intention, also known as right thought or right resolve, refers to the commitment to ethical and mental self-improvement. It's about fostering thoughts of goodwill and harmlessness, renouncing desires that lead to harm and suffering. In essence, it's a call to cultivate a mindset of kindness, compassion and wisdom, which in turn guides our actions towards positive outcomes. By nurturing right intention, we can steer our actions away from harm and towards the path of enlightenment. In Buddhism, the power of intention is not a mystical concept but a practical tool for personal transformation. It's a beacon that lights the path towards a more mindful and compassionate existence. It's a call to introspection, a reminder 
that the quality of our lives is not merely a product of our circumstances, but a reflection of our intentions. To conclude, in Buddhism, our intentions not only determine our actions, but also their consequences. So, as we navigate through the journey of life, let's remember the profound power of intention. Let's cultivate right intention, for it is the seed from which wholesome actions grow, the compass that guides us towards a life of meaning, happiness, and peace. Uh, man, in Hinduism, intention holds a central role in shaping our karma. Hinduism, one of the world's oldest religions, Pse gives great importance to the concept of intention, or sankalpa, as it is known in Sanskrit. In this, in this context, Sankalpa is more than just a wish or desire. It is a deep-rooted resolve or commitment that influences our actions and, ultimately, our karma. So, what is karma? In Hindu philosophy, karma is the law of cause and effect, the sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence, viewed as deciding their fate in future existences. It is believed that every action, thought, and intention one has will somehow, in some way, come back to them. If we delve a bit deeper, the concept of Sankalpa is integral to many rituals and practices in Hinduism. It is the conscious intention made before embarking on any task, ritual, or journey. This intention, or Sankalpa, is like a seed sown in the mind, which when nurtured with faith and perseverance, blossoms into reality. The significance of Sankalpa in Hindu rituals is profound. Before initiating any ritual, the performer sets a Sankalpa, a commitment to complete the task with pure intentions. This Sankalpa is believed to energize the ritual and guide the performer towards the desired outcome. It is a powerful tool that aligns our thoughts, words, and actions with our deepest desires and aspirations. But Sankalpa is not just about fulfilling worldly desires. It is about aligning ourselves with the universe's divine will. It's about realizing our true potential and living our lives with purpose and meaning. It's about transforming our thoughts, actions, and ultimately our lives through the power of intention. In Hinduism, the purity of intention is considered paramount. It is believed that pure intentions not only purify our actions, but also our souls. The Bhagavad Gita, a sacred text of Hinduism, says, you have a right to perform your prescribed duties, but you are not entitled to the fruits of your actions. This teaches us to act with pure intentions without expecting rewards or outcomes. In Hinduism, pure intentions not only purify our actions, but also our souls. Confucianism emphasizes the role of intention in maintaining social order and harmony. This ancient philosophy born in the heart of China places a great deal of importance on the concept of Li, which loosely translates to the right way of doing things. But what sets Confucianism apart is how it intertwines Li with the power of intention. At the core of Confucianism, we find a strong belief that our external actions are deeply rooted in our internal intentions. This is where the concept of Li enters the picture. Li is not just about following a set of rules or behaving in a socially acceptable manner. It is about acting out of a genuine desire to contribute to the harmony and well-being of society. Imagine you are helping an elderly person across the street. If you're doing it simply because you feel obligated or because others are watching, then as per Confucianism, you're missing the essence of lich. Lowing is about doing the right thing, but doing it with the right intention. Your action becomes virtuous when it's driven by a sincere intention to help, a genuine concern for the elderly person's safety. Confucianism teaches us 
that good intentions lead to virtuous actions. The philosophy encourages us to constantly reflect on our intentions, to ensure they are aligned with the principles of benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and trustworthiness. These are the five cardinal virtues of Confucianism, and they all hinge on the purity and sincerity of our intentions. It's not just about what we do, but why we do it. Our intentions give meaning to our actions. They give depth to our deeds. This is why Confucianism places such a strong emphasis on intention. It's an invitation to delve deeper, to look beyond the surface of our actions and examine the motivations that drive them. With this understanding, it's clear that intention plays a pivotal role in Confucianism. It's not just a passive thought or a fleeting desire, but a powerful force that shapes our actions and ultimately our character. In Confucianism, our intentions define the morality of our actions. Yes, in Judaism, intention is the core of fulfilling religious obligations. At the heart of this faith tradition, you'll find a powerful concept known as kavana. This Hebrew term goes beyond a mere translation of intention. It encapsulates the mindset, the focus, the heartfelt intent that is essential to genuinely fulfill a commandment in Judaism. Kavana is not an abstract idea or an optional extra. It is woven into the very fabric of Jewish religious practice. It's the soulful concentration that infuses meaning into every word uttered in prayer, every ritual performed, every mitzvah or good deed carried out. Consider the act of prayer in Judaism. It's not merely about reciting words from a prayer book. It's about connecting with the divine, with the words acting as a conduit for the sincere intention of the heart. It's about the kavanah, the profound focus and intent that gives life to these words, making them more than mere utterances. But Kavana is not confined to prayer alone. It extends to all aspects of Jewish life, from observing the Sabbath to the simple act of eating. Every action becomes an opportunity to engage with a higher purpose, to connect with the divine. The beauty of Kavana lies in its emphasis on the power of intention. It teaches that it's not just about what we do, but why and how we do it. It underscores the belief that the intention behind an action can elevate it, giving it spiritual significance. Kavanaugh calls for mindfulness, for a conscious focus on the present moment, for a heart filled with sincere intention. It's about approaching each task, each moment, with a sense of purpose, with a clear intent that aligns with the divine will. In the grand tapestry of Judaism, Kavanaugh serves as a reminder that our intentions shape our actions, our experiences, and ultimately our spiritual journey. It's a testament to the belief that the inner world of intention can powerfully impact the outer world of action. For Judaism, the intention behind an action is as important as the action itself. Um, in Islam, the intention or niyyah is the foundation of every action. The concept of niyyah, which translates to intention, holds a profound place within the Islamic faith. It is not merely a prelude to, to action, but rather, it is the spirit that breathes life into every deed. Niya is the soul's inner compass, guiding the believer through a universe of choices towards the path of righteousness. In Islam, every act of worship begins with Niya. It serves as the spiritual preface that sets the stage for the believer's engagement with the divine. Prayers, fasting, charity, these are not mere rituals, but expressions of a deeper intent. They are the visible manifestations of the invisible Nia. But Nia is not confined to acts of worship. It permeates every aspect of a Muslim's life.
from the mundane to the monumental, every action is imbued with intention. Whether it's sharing a meal with a neighbor or embarking on a journey of self-improvement, the act is given significance by the intent that underlies it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, actions are judged by intentions. This statement is a cornerstone of Islamic thought. It emphasizes that the value of an action lies not in its outward form, but in the intention that fuels it. This is why sincerity in intention is so deeply cherished in Islam. A small act done with pure intent can hold more value than a grand gesture done for show. The concept of niyyah reminds us that our lives are not just a series of random events, but a journey guided by our intentions. It teaches us to be mindful, to be sincere, to be purposeful in our actions. It invites us to reflect on why we do what we do and to align our actions with our highest values and aspirations. So in Islam, niyyah is not just a concept. It is a way of life. It is a call to live consciously with purpose and sincerity. It is a reminder that our intentions shape our actions and our actions in turn shape our lives. In Islam, actions are judged by intentions, making it a crucial aspect of the faith. Uh, across religions and cultures, the power of intention resonates as a universal truth. Stepping back, we see a tapestry woven from threads of truth, each strand representing the wisdom of a different culture or religion. Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, Judaism, and Islam. Each thread, while unique in its color and texture, carries a similar message, the power of intention. In Buddhism, intention is the seed, the initial thought that burgeons into the tree of action. It teaches us that our intentions, whether driven by greed, hatred, or delusion, shape our actions and ultimately our experience of the world. A seed of male intent can only bear thorns, while a seed of goodwill blossoms into a tree of peace. Hinduism echoes this wisdom, placing intention at the heart of karma. The universe, it says, is an echo chamber. Our intentions whispered into the void, return to us in the form of our experiences. Good intentions therefore yield good karma and vice versa. Confucianism, with its focus on societal harmony, emphasizes the intention of propriety. It urges us to act with the right intention, not for personal gain or recognition, but for the greater good. In doing so, it assures us, we create ripples of harmony that radiate throughout society. In Judaism, intention, or kavna, is the compass guiding our actions. It is the heart's whisper, the soul's longing that directs us towards our divine purpose. Without intention, actions are merely mechanical, devoid of spirit and significance. Islam too recognizes the power of intention, or naya. It teaches that actions are but empty shells and it is intention that breathes life into them. Without the right intention, even the most virtuous deeds lose their value. Looking at this tapestry with a broader lens, we see a universal truth emerge. Our intentions shape our actions, our experiences, and ultimately our destiny. Whether we sow seeds of love or discord, whether we whisper words of kindness or malice into the universe's echo chamber, whether we act for personal gain or societal harmony, whether we perform empty deeds or infuse them with purposeful intent, we weave our own fate. This is the miracle of intention, a truth that transcends boundaries of religion, culture, and geography. It is a truth that empowers us, reminding us that we are not merely passive spectators in the theater of life. We are the playwrights, the directors, the actors. Our intentions are the script, the stage directions, the performance. So 
Before embarking on any project or activity, remember to set clear intentions, for they are not just whispers in the void or seeds in the soil. They are echoes that will return, trees that will grow, ripples that will radiate, compasses that will guide, and breaths that will give life. Before embarking on any project or activity, remember to set clear intentions, for they will surely manifest.